everyone. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Lorraine Woodward to the show. Lorraine is the founder and CEO of Becoming Rentable, uh, a one and a half year old company she started. And it's all about accessibility in the short term housing market, how how she is helping people to find accommodations uh, when they travel. So welcome to the show, Lorraine. Thank you, Stephen. I'm happy to be here. So tell us all about this website and this service you offer. Sure. Becoming Rentable um, is our company, and we are looking to expand what it means to have an accessible short-term rental property. So many times when we think of accessibility, we think of wheelchair users. And I'm in a wheelchair. And, um, and as we started doing research, we started out as a TV show. And as we- really? Yes. Wow. And uh, we're still looking at the TV show, but um, in our um, surveys and gathering information about the needs of travelers with disabilities, from not only the United States, but actually all over the world, we um, found there is a large population that is not being served in the short-term rental space. And that is people um, that use walkers, people with vision, hearing, autism, as well as intellectual and developmental disabilities. So we're looking at expanding what it means and what is defined as an accessible short-term rental property. Wow. So do you think that this could include a scope of people with developmental disabilities that perhaps are not physical? Absolutely. That is one of our, we have five focused areas. And in one of our focused area, it's autism IDD. And wow. so we very much believe in looking at, uh, because again, in the area of the spectrum of autism and intellectual disabilities, there are parameter of needs to make that travel environment comfortable and safe. Right. So what are the other four areas? So we talked about IDD. What are the other four? Walker, mm -hmm. wheelchair, mm -hmm. vision, mm -hmm. hearing, and then autism IDD. Wow, that's wonderful. So the website works like a normal uh, site for looking for property to rent. And I've been on it. You have all these tags. So you can <laughs> say exactly what you're looking for. And you've been at this for about a year and a half, right? A year and a half. Yes, it's wow. amazing. We have uh, 14 volunteers. We're all volunteers. We've yeah. really focused our first year in development to identify who we are. What is our mission, our vision, our values, our pillars of, of strength? And to really have that very clear before we look at our business as a, a monetization of a business of bringing in money. So we're just now at that point. We allowed 12 to 18 months of, of growth and identity. And now we're starting to look at how are we going to bring in money? Right. So as of right now, do you have listings for accessible rental, short-term rentals in every state? We do. We just, this weekend, <laughs> I'm so happy to say we have over a thousand properties listed um, in all over the United States. Now, I say that we do not have territories. Someone reached mm -hmm. out, what about Puerto Rico? What about Guam? And it's <laughs> like, you know, we better start looking. Uh, but we are in all 50 um, states. And how do people, how do you find those rentals and how do you vet them and verify that they are indeed what they say they are? Right. So we have on our website, we have a component that says list my property. Somebody can go online and they fill out kind of like an application and they identify what their accessible features are. Uh, we then go to their URL and we look for those items that is listed and they go, yep, we see all of that. And then we will let the whoever submitted their property, we will then let them know we have published your property. Wow. So that is one way. It's free. Um, we don't charge to be on our website. Another way is we have a certification program and that is a fee for service. And uh, what we do, because the biggest challenge that we found 
particularly with the larger platforms, is when people go in and submit their property to be on Airbnb or VRBO or Vacasa, Book Direct, whatever that platform is, it's you're self-identifying. You're saying, yes, but like VRBO, they only have two areas that they want to know. Are you accessible? And do you have an elevator? That's all they're asking for. And whereas Airbnb, they have more filters. So you can identify, you know, the width of your front door, a zero threshold entry into the bedrooms and bathrooms. So they have a few more. And so what we do is when we, so the second way is people can get certified. And our certification is for all of our five areas of focus. And what we do is we validate what you say you have you have because when you're on um, Airbnb or on one of these platforms and you start looking for accessible properties and it says yes we're accessible and then somebody may rent it going great I need an accessible property they get to the property and there's three stairs uh, but yeah. they have grab rails you know in their shower it's like we're yeah. accessible see but they don't think about you know and follow through the whole concept of what it means to be accessible. So if we see, if somebody comes in and says, Lorraine, we want to certify our properties accessible, and we go to the renter and we say, do you have another entrance? We see your front entrance or your side entrance has three steps. If I were to be in a wheelchair, how would I get into your property? And then, so we, we go and we validate everything that they say is true, because we've heard the horror stories that people will book an accessible property, but it's not, it, it doesn't meet their needs. And that's one of the reasons that we have 36 filters. You know, I've, I, I've been talking to a number of groups about um, the listings on our website. And um, that what's like, why do you have 36 filters? And I said, because what is accessible to me may not be exactly. accessible to you. So this exactly. way you really customize what you're looking for and what your needs are. So how many listings do you have right now on the site a in thousand. total? Oh, a thousand. as of today, I think it was a thousand three. Okay. And how many, what would be a critical mass number for you? Right. What was it? What number are you shooting for? Well, you know what? The more the merrier. We yeah. do know that we have more accessible properties than Airbnb and VRBO combined. Already? Already. Wow. Wow. Yes. So how how many people are you visiting your website to look for property? You know, we're growing. We're about yeah. 3,000 a day. So 3,000 a day. Yeah. That's really you know, cool. We, it, it is cool, but we want to be 10,000 a day and 20,000 a day. You know, again, uh, we're new. Uh, I mean, we've been, you know, we've, we have been building our foundation of who we are. And then about a year ago, we started you know, she's sharing our information. And so we're, we're just now at the point of people are going, oh, wait a minute, becoming rentable. They have all of these properties go there and look. And, you know, we're, we're, we're introducing something that's very new and different. And that is we're going beyond what a wheelchair needs are. And now, I want to I, I get into that a bit more, if I may just go yes. right there. I have a lot of listeners who have family members who are not wheelchair users and are not uh, deaf or uh, or are not sight impaired, but are IDD, perhaps mm -hmm. moderate to low functioning autistic uh, mm -hmm. on the autism spectrum. What filters are you using to find help those folks find short term uh, rental properties? What, what are the filters that are relevant for IDD? So we have our general 36 filters. And, and they identify things like um, zero threshold entries, you know, yeah. the, do the door sizes. And we have an autism filter that says autism. Oh, what wow. we haven't, yeah. So you can go on our site and say, I want to see all of your autism accessible properties and 50 will populate or 35. Will, I don't know our exact number of how many we have. We will be adding specifics, but what we look for in an autism IDD property, we look for soft color hues. We look for extra um, locks, pin locks and windows, and a secondary lock 
um, on the any exterior door for safety. Um, we look at um, weighted blankets. We look at fidgets. We look at properties that are more in a minimalist um, order versus a lot of tchotchkes and stuff around. We look at a space that is quiet. We look at blackout curtains. We look at dimmer switches. Um, we look at, so there's a host of things that wow. we swings, gliders. What about services? Do you consider their proximity to short-term support services that a lot of folks on the spectrum require? Or is that just up to the tenant? That's really the, 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 the family, family with their needs. We focus specifically on the property. That what does sense. the property have? And then all of those other elements that's important to the family will then identify those on their own. Wow. So how many, uh, so you make your money on bookings, right? It's no, free to list. Free. No, we don't. We, um, uh, we, I know you're going, what? Oh, I'm just curious how, where the business model works, how you're right. going to make so money the, from this. It's, it's our certification program. Uh, it's For the properties yeah Through for the, the properties. rental properties yes yes yeah we um so that's our, our primary we're looking at, at building a corporate sponsorship um that um uh, will help underwrite we have a property um it's a model property that just got on the market we spent a year building it's in conway arkansas right outside of little rock it's called the little yellow house and it's a fully accessible property for people in wheelchairs, walker, wow. autism, IDD, vision and hearing. We wow. put all of it into this little house. And the idea is it's an educational tool. So if somebody wants to come and say, how do you make your house so that it is autism, IDD um, accessible? What does that look like? And I can say, here's the little yellow house. We want to do videos. Um, so that we can take this information and go to colleges and universities in their occupational therapy programs, their physical therapy programs, show them what all of these features look like. So when they start their career, they have that experience and understanding of why these elements of properties are important to be fully accessible. And so we'll look at sponsorships through that kind of stuff. So we are definitely looking at multiple revenue streams on how we generate money. Um, and right now, today, we're, uh, we're, we're up and running with our certification program. Wow, that's wonderful. So I'm a, uh, an altruistic uh, landlord or a property owner, not a landlord, a property owner. And I want to, quote unquote, Airbnb my place that is beautifully wheelchair friendly, I could go through your certification process and get this designation that people on your site would see that this property has achieved this standard of housing for short-term rentals. And, uh, and, and how, much, how much would that cost me? Let's suppose it was a one-bedroom condo, fully wheelchair accessible. How, what's the process? How long would it take me to get certified and how much would it cost me as, it a, costs, as a owner of a property? It's $300. And mm. it can be one bedrooms, five bedrooms, seven bedrooms, yeah. three bathrooms, size doesn't matter. Um, and it could be for any of our five areas. It's, it's just one price. And our turnaround right now is at about seven days. And what, oh, you wow. get, what you get for your certification is, A, you get a medallion that says that you are wheelchair accessible certified or walker accessible certified or autism accessible certified that medallion will go on your website um, so that they can people that are looking for this type of a property can see that you've received this standard and you will get a secondary medallion that you, if you want you can put in a front door window to say that you are accessible we will put it on our map so people can see it. Our hope is that by working with some of these larger platforms, we would like to see a filter called um, 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 certified accessible. So you click on that certified accessible filter 
and and anybody that has our certification you populate to the top uh, even if they're not on your platform even if they're on a competitor's platform yes and and the reason being is it's all about the experience we want people with disabilities to be able to travel and have a positive experience in finding what they need. You know, yes. I've spent hours and days looking for something that's going to meet our family's needs. I have muscular dystrophy along with two boys, so there's three of us. So to find something that's going to meet our needs is like a needle in a haystack. And so it gets very frustrating. And so why why be frustrated when there are accessible properties? Let's populate those to the top and, and let's do that by this classification of certification. So you mentioned that you're comfortable with creating a certification that would allow the consumer to find adequately accessible properties and lower the frustration of trying to travel when you're dealing with disability. I think that's great. Do you envision that your web portal, that your site for searching for properties could at some point be part of one of these larger platforms and thus reach a, a larger clientele? Or do you imagine staying independent? And I just wanna say, one of the reasons I asked this is because about five years ago, I had a conversation with someone who had a site trying to show properties the way you did, and they ended up getting swallowed up by one of these big players. and. I don't know if the outcome was what the original founders would have wanted it to end up looking like, but there may have been a lot of money at stake, right? And I get that. So can you comment on that? Sure. You know, we've, uh, a number of companies have come to us, particularly outside the United States. Lorraine, will you be, do a Becoming Rentable in Italy, in Australia, in um, Spain? And people have asked us, Lorraine, what is your exit? They call it an exit strategy. Like, who do you want to buy you? And it's like, well, we're not here to develop this business for somebody to come and buy us. For me, it's not about the money. It's about change. You know, somebody asked me recently, and you asked the question, what is that number that we want to be at? Is it 10,000 properties, 20,000? I look at more the shift of what we're doing is um, being modeled in other programs, that there are more properties that are, are accessible. So for me, it's that social change that I'm interested in and that people look beyond accessibility in just a wheelchair, but we really look at the a spectrum of disabilities that, um, and that's what's important to me. Um, it's, it's, and that's why I have 14 volunteers. Yes, I do want to make money and pay my volunteers. And I think they would appreciate being paid as well. <laughs> and it is part of our, our, our goals to have that revenue come in, but that's not the barometer I look at for success. It's not what I seek to do. You know, somebody asked me recently, if they gave you $50 million, would you, would you go to that company? And I said, I would talk to them about an aspect of our company but I would not sell our whole company for anything. It's too important. You know, again, we are looking at a global change in this industry and it's gonna right. take a while to get there. Now, do you come from this industry or is your background different? And, and if it is different, how did you come to want to take on such a uh, big project? <laughs> you know, no, it's not my it's not my real home. Advocacy is. I've been um, involved in advocacy work my whole life. I owned a communications firm for 30 years and we specialized in working with nonprofit state and federal agencies that were related to healthcare and disability. Um, before that, um, I worked in Washington, D.C. for my congressman dealing with health care issues. I, um, so I've been in, I paint canes. Um, I have oh, Lorraine's cool. canes. Um, and so if you ever need a cane, you go to Lorraine's canes. They're solid wood. We cut them to 17 inches to 42. And they're lions and tigers and pink flamingos and birds and bright pink and yellow and purple. Um, and they're carved in upstate New York. Um, and so the idea of advocacy and change has, has been uh, my whole life. I turned 60 this year. Oh, and congratulations. Thank you. I know. I'm like so proud. I am 60. <laughs> like, this is so cool. Um, and 
I didn't travel a lot as a, as a young girl with my mom. It was always about if we had time, it was about surgeries or going to a medical treatments, but not traditional vacations. And I didn't want that for my boys. And so when they graduated high school, um, I built a property three hours away at Carolina Beach here in North Carolina. And I um, had a second floor that I devoted to bringing in revenue as a short-term rental property. But I designed it for my family and I designed it for somebody with the least amount of mobility and also end of life. Um, I mm -hmm. felt like there's so many people at their end of life that want to be at the beach. And what did that entail? It didn't entail that much more. You know, we have the hospital bed, we have the Hoyer lift, you know, we have the elevator, the wide doors, the threshold, a wet room. You know, we had, you know, all of these features. And it was that experience of families traveling from Canada or California or Texas or Michigan that said, Lorraine, there's nothing like this. And it's like, you've got to be kidding. And as I researched and found that there really was not truly that many accessible properties, even though, you know, we, a company may say we have 3000 accessible properties. Well, when I started looking at these properties, doors were 28 inches, there were steps, mm -hmm. you know, the, the furniture was just big, uh, hard to move and no place for a walker or wheelchair to access knowing what my family's needs were, I'm going, this is crazy. So when I became 59, I said, I want to do one last hurrah before I retire. And that's <laughs> when I said, I'm doing a TV show. And, wow. um, and so God has taken me, um, not down the straight and narrow path, but we go through hills and curves and valleys. No, that's true. And, that's uh, life. It is life. What is the TV show called? Becoming Rentable. And, and if someone want it, is it on YouTube? Like, can people access it on YouTube? No, we're, we're going to be pitching it to Discovery and Hulu and um, Apple. We have oh, wow. Apple. Okay. Yep. We have our sizzle reel uh, is what you have to have when you go pitch it to producers. It's online at uh, becomingrentable.com and people okay. can go and check it out. Wow. So if the goal is to get certifications in place so that people have... Uh, a medallion or some sort of authentication. How how many have you issued since you started and how many do you want to have by the end of the year or by next year? Have you given any thought to that? Um, yes, we just started last okay. week with our first ones. Um, and so we have a low number right now. Um, yeah, okay, I fair would, enough. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, as far again, it is about numbers but it's even the inquiries make me happy because yeah. what we're finding out is that people inquire and it's like, okay, when I finish my bathroom renovation, when I finish this, we'll get certified. So I get calls and again, you can go to our website and it says um, um, a certification and people can ask questions and send those to me and I get them ask every single day. And so it's not always about the finalization of the medallion. I'm happy even with the questions because we're moving forward and people are seeing the need and the value and the benefit. You know, absolutely. I mean, we have an aging society and we uh, and more and more awareness every day about about accessibility. And a lot of people don't think about it in terms of travel and in terms of people are thinking about it in terms of long term housing, which is what my show normally talks about. And so I'm so excited to talk to you about this, Lorraine. So do you find that families and people who contact you or, or who use the website or you interact with after they've used the website have found something on your site that they weren't able to find elsewhere online. Yes, it was, it was really fun because when we first released our, our website, somebody called me and said, oh, oh, it makes me sad now that I think about it. It was Fort Myers, Florida. Oh. I know, but they yeah. wanted to go somewhere. They couldn't find anything. So I went on our site in five minutes. I got back to them and in, within the five minutes, they booked their vacation and they went to Fort Myers before the, the hurricane but wow. they were able to do that. They were amazed. It's like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what we want. It was like such a great day 
to be able to help them. And, and I will also say, I tell people all the time in the short term rental space, you know, it's always about bookings. Everybody wants more bookings. We want to expand, yeah. you know, the money, money, money. And I tell people, my renters are the best renters ever. And it's because they have such appreciation and respect for the space that that they have. And I get gifts. I get gifts, you know, when renters come. I get thank you notes, you know, yeah. um, because they're so appreciative. One of my favorite things was um, a young man, he's 16. His name is Gideon. And Gideon got out of the van um, to come. His family was staying at our property. And he said, excuse me, do you, are you the, the owner of this property? And I said, yes. He goes, well, I want to thank you because this will be my first vacation that I can take a shower. Oh, he wow. Had, he had never. So that a couple of days later, I went downstairs. I'm on the third floor. And so I go and I go visit with the family. And uh, I said, all right, Gideon, what do you like best about um, the, the, the space? Is it the bathroom? He said, no, he goes, I love the bathroom. He goes, but you know what I love the most? I said, what? He said, I can pop my own popcorn because the microwave's at my height. He said, oh. I don't have to ask my mom to turn up or down the heat. I can do it myself and we don't have to battle. And when I want to turn off the light, I go turn off the light. And wow. that is why I do what I do. Wow. So what has been, uh, as we are, we can, believe it or not, we're running out of time. I told you. <laughs> um, what do you think is the most biggest lesson you've learned as you've been going down this road with this uh, new site? What What is the biggest you know, lesson and what might be helpful to others who are interested in making a difference around accessibility? Right. Well, um, in regard to the lesson learned, what I've really found is about our disability community and trying to think outside yourself. So many times it's like, Lorraine, that's not accessible. And I said, it may not be accessible to you, but it could be accessible to somebody else. And the idea of expanding your thoughts beyond the wheelchair and to think about autism and IDD and vision and hearing and walker and canes. And it's been so much focus. And again, I use a wheelchair. I rely on the access of my wheelchair and I, I, I need that. But I think that is part of really the greatest lesson is just even educating and, communi and communicating with our disability community to think beyond themselves and to really think of their friends and relatives and what their needs could be in travel. That was a surprise. I thought we would be just totally embraced by our disability community. And we've had great in, you know, embracing by our, our disability community, but we've been challenged by it. And I actually like the challenge because it validates for me what we're doing and why we're doing it. And the importance of, again, looking at the spot broad spectrum. And I think that what the area that, um, if somebody wanted to help is to share our site with others and invite people to come to our site um, and see what we're doing. Again, we're new. I mean, we're babies and here we are trying to change, make this global change. You know, we have a long way to go and we're not going to do it by ourselves. You know, everybody's like, Lorraine, you've done a great job. And it's like, no, thank you. But it's our team. Together, we can do something. Single handedly, I couldn't do this, but together we can do it. And that's what I see of where we need help is together mm -hmm. getting the word out. That's how we're going to grow and make a difference. Right, right. Well, it all sounds really amazing to me, Lorraine. I think it's great. Um, and uh, I do encourage my listeners uh, to check out your site. We uh, will put the link in the show notes and also a link to your Canes site, yes, which I might you. check out myself because I, I use Canes. So I will absolutely be checking that out myself. And I just want to thank you again for making time to speak with me uh, today. Anytime. If, if you you know, have me back. I'll tell you more great <laughs> stories of how we've grown. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen.